Hi, and congratulations on getting your new Nikon D5100 digital SLR. You've made a great choice. I'm Bob Christ and I'm a professional photographer, probably best known for my travel photography. You may have seen some of my photographs in magazines like National Geographic Traveler, Smithsonian, and Islands, or in one of my books, such as A Photo Tour of New York or In Tuscany. Today, I'll tell you all about your new Nikon D5100 and also give you some tips and suggestions along the way to help you take terrific pictures. You know, by getting a Nikon digital DSLR camera, you've taken a major step towards creating incredible photographs and movies. If you're an experienced photographer, you'll be impressed with the amount of control this camera gives you. And if you're new to digital SLR photography, you'll love how the scene modes make it all so easy. But no matter what kind of photographer you are, you'll want to take your camera everywhere. It's fast, powerful, remarkably compact, and fun to use. Your Nikon D5100 is packed with some great features. It includes a 16.2 megapixel CMOS image sensor, a full HD 1080p movie mode with full-time autofocus, an ultra-sharp 3-inch vari-angle LCD monitor, lightning quick shutter response, super accurate focusing, and a four frame per second continuous shooting mode. Now we'll go into detail on all these features and more in just a few moments. While some of you may want to learn everything about your new camera, I bet many of you just want to shorten the learning curve and get started as soon as possible. And that's exactly why we created this DVD. Our goal is to have you taking great pictures and movies in no time. To make it easy, We've divided this Nikon School DVD into four sections. Section one is your quick start guide. Here I'll cover all the basics, including the initial setup of your camera and basic handling techniques to help you get started right away. In section two, get to know your D5100, I'll go into a little more detail and show you some other great features, controls, and functions of your camera. For section three, capture the moment. My friend Matt will show you how to take great pictures with your new Nikon D5100 in a variety of situations and give you some creative advice as well. And then in section four, going further, I'll wrap things up back here and talk about lenses, accessories, how to download, share, and modify your images and movies. And remember, you can always refer back to your D5100 user manual whenever you need more specific information. Well, I know you're ready to get going, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is open the box and take everything out of the packaging. Then find the quick start guide sheet and keep it handy as you set up your camera. Before we do anything else, let's charge the battery. First, remove the terminal cover and slide the battery into the charger like this. Then, just plug the charger into a wall socket. This charge lamp will blink while the battery is charging. Now, since your D5100 is a quality Nikon digital SLR, one of its best features is the ability to use an incredible range of Nikkor lenses, including the zoom lens that may have come with your camera. Here's how to attach the lens. First, make sure the camera is switched to off. Now, take the rear lens cap off with a twist and then take off the body cap like this. Next, line up this index mark on the lens with the index mark on the camera body and rotate the lens counterclockwise until it clicks. To take the lens off again, simply press this release button here and rotate the lens clockwise until it stops and then remove the lens. Your camera has an advanced automatic sensor cleaning feature built right in. But it's still best to change lenses quickly and try not to keep the camera body open so long that dust doesn't settle in there. You'll notice that there are a couple of switches on the barrel of the lens. This one is for the focus control. A is for autofocus and M is for manual focus. For now, let's make sure it's in A. Then there's also a VR symbol next to this switch and you'll want to turn that to on. Now VR stands for vibration reduction and it's a sophisticated piece of image stabilization technology that reduces blur caused by camera shake. To remove the front lens cap, squeeze these two buttons together and pull the cap away from the lens. And just do the reverse to place it back on. Now's also a good time to attach the neck strap. 
Just follow the instructions on the quick start guide. Okay, so after the battery's been charging for about an hour and a half, the charge lamp stopped blinking and it's ready to go. The charge on this rechargeable battery lasts a long time. In fact, you can expect to take several hundred images before it needs recharging. Before inserting the battery, make sure the camera is turned off. Open this door, slip the battery in, and then click the door closed. Okay, now turn this switch here to turn on the camera. In the next section of this DVD, I'll explain many of the features of your Nikon D5100, but this is the perfect time to introduce you to some basic functions and controls. The first is the mode dial, here on top of the camera. This control allows you to easily choose from a number of automatic and manual shooting modes. The scene modes, represented by these different icons, optimize the camera's settings to suit common scenes that you may want to shoot, which means you can concentrate on finding and composing great pictures while the camera does the rest. By selecting scene, you can also access other scene modes, which we'll go into a little later. You'll also see four letters up on the mode dial, P, S, A, and M. These are different kinds of modes that give you full control over your settings and images. There's also a setting called Effects, and it's a quick way to access a number of fun special effects modes. Later in this DVD, you'll see how to use these Scene, P, S, A, and M, and Effects modes to really enhance your photography. Now this control is called the Multi Selector, and as its name implies, it controls a number of functions on the camera. The multi selector is like a small joystick. You use it to scroll through menus and settings, both up and down and left and right. Then press the OK button in the center to make a selection. Let's use the multi selector right now to make the initial settings on your camera. Turn the camera on and then press this menu button. Now look on the LCD monitor and you'll see a wide variety of settings and controls that you can access and adjust. Use the multi-selector to scroll down to the setup menu screen. Move the multi-selector to the right and scroll down until you see language, press OK and choose a language and press OK again. Now scroll up to time and press OK. Here you can continue to set your time zone, date and time and a few other settings. So this is just one example. You'll use this same method to choose and adjust many other menu functions as well. In order to save all your pictures and videos, you'll need one of these, a secure digital memory card, or SD card. Now the greater the capacity of the card, the more photos you can store. I bet you'll be taking a lot of pictures, so you'll probably want at least a 4 or 8 gigabyte card. Now these larger cards are called SDHC, or Secure Digital High Capacity Cards, or SDXC, or Secure Digital Extended Capacity Cards. Before you insert a memory card, make sure the camera is off. Now, open the memory card slot cover. Just slide it towards the back of the camera and it'll flip open. Insert the SD card into the slot like this and close the door. Before you can use an SD card, you'll have to format it. Formatting will completely erase any pictures or videos that are on the card. So if you're reusing a card, make sure you've downloaded everything off of it before you format it. Turn the camera on and press the menu button again. Now use the multi selector to highlight setup menu. Then scroll through the menus and find format memory card. Then select format and then press OK. All right, let's talk about the viewfinder. If you're used to a point and shoot camera, you probably use the LCD monitor to frame up your pictures. And you'll be able to do that on your D5100 as well by using the live view function. But with the D5100, you'll want to use the viewfinder more often than not, especially in bright conditions and for critical focus confirmation and composition. There's an adjustable diopter here for clear viewing, even if you normally wear glasses. Just put your eye up to the viewfinder and turn the dial until the focus brackets are in sharp focus. Let me show you some basic handling techniques so you can start using your D5100 right away. First, make sure the camera's turned on. Then turn the mode dial to auto. Now the auto mode allows you to shoot pictures with point and shoot simplicity. It'll also activate the built-in flash if the camera senses that it needs more light. Now here's the easiest way I find to steady my camera. 
I start by tucking my left elbow into my chest. Then I open the palm of my left hand and place the camera right on top, like a little table. Now I can comfortably hold the camera steady while my right hand is free to operate the controls. Now this position works great for verticals as well. To use the zoom, just turn this ring here in and out and compose the shot the way you like it. Now this is the shutter release button and by pressing the button halfway down, it'll lock focus right on your subject. Then just push the shutter all the way down to take the picture. All right, at this point, you have all the basic information you need to go out and start taking some great pictures. But this camera is a pretty amazing piece of technology that can let you take even better pictures. And isn't that why you purchased your Nikon in the first place? In the next section of this DVD, I'll tell you even more about your camera and show you some of its other great features, functions, and controls.